Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. I hope you were able to follow me up on the previous video. In this video, we're gonna write some code in our index.js file. Don't worry, it's not too much. We're gonna just write three part of the code. It's divided into three section, and that's what we all gonna do. It's not really a fully complicated project. We just want to have something so that we can actually work and get a feel of how a real world project is deployed on a Docker machine. So let's go ahead and it's time that we take down this index.js, the final part that's missing into from our diagram. So we are in our index.js file and we have actually three parts that we are gonna be working. The first part is actually declaration. So, uh, or rather not declaration, it is actually usage and uh, or calling would be a better name. So we have to first call some of these libraries and modules from the node modules and we have to declare them as a variable, kind of invoking the instance from it. The second one is actually the routing part. So we're gonna create some route and the final one is the listening part. So we are gonna just have some of the listeners up here. Now, okay, so these are three very basic simple part that we are gonna do. Uh, I'm not gonna even write them as a comment because they are so simple and so easy to do. So first and foremost, remember we have installed this, uh, if you remember, we have got this express. Uh, we are gonna first and foremost, we are gonna simply say require, and then we're gonna simply say express, okay. Now you can also follow me along even though you don't realize much or you have never coded in JavaScript or anything. You might have coded in Ruby or C++ or Java. You can still follow along. This is not really a big code. And then we're gonna simply create an app and that's gonna be created by this express. So there we go. That's all what we have got. Okay, so this is the first part. Now we're gonna work on the very last part first because that's easier one. So we're gonna simply say app and our app is gonna be listening. Now again, it doesn't really mean that you have to call it an app or anything. You can call it as toy, however you want to call your app, whatever you want to call. This first part is actually compulsory. The second part is actually whatever you feel like you can call it. So we're gonna call this, first part is even also not a compulsory, but it's, let's leave it there. So then we're gonna simply say app.listen. Now this app.listen uh, method takes two parameter. The first one is on what port number you want to listen. Maybe you want to listen to 8000. Again, this is a server, kind of server, and it's providing its service, and service can be provided on any port. 8000, 3000, 8080, 3000, whatever it is, you got the point. And then just for the fun, we are gonna have a callback. So how do we have a callback? It's like a function without names. So in the JavaScript world, we simply do a pair of parentheses, then an arrow, which is a combination of equal sign and uh, uh, right angular bracket. It's a little bit weird in the JavaScript world, but that's what we call as an arrow function. And then we have a curly braces. So this, my dear friend here, is a simple uh, callback function. So we have got 8,000 here, the port number and callback. Now this part is totally optional. If you want to have it, have it. If you don't want to have it, it's not gonna break the application. Here inside it, we are gonna just hit an enter and we're gonna simply say console.log and we're gonna simply say app is running, oops, app is running at 8,000 so that we know some message is being printed. Okay. So the two part is done. The remaining part is really simple. We have to just configure some of the routes. So basically what we are building up, we are building a simple web application in which somebody visits a link on the local host that links provide us some data back. So how we do that? We simply are gonna say our app variable is created. If somebody makes a get request on the link that is slash means home URL, then we actually throw back a callback. Again, this callback is a really funny stuff in the JavaScript. So this is what we are gonna have. Again, we're gonna hit enter up here. This second callback actually takes two parameter in this particular application, which is request and response, okay? You don't need to worry too much about it actually. And actually I forgot to put a comma there. There we go, don't miss that. So what we're doing is we're gonna send a response. So this is a request to response. So we're gonna simply say respond with by sending a simple name up here. So inside the double quotes, we're gonna just simply use an H1 tag. Uh, this is like a basic templating kind of a stuff. So we're gonna simply writing an HTML here. We're gonna simply say root or we're gonna simply say visiting root. There we go. 
So that's all what we are gonna have. Uh, I'm gonna just save that. Now, how do I run this application? In order to run this application, remember we have got a couple of commands that we can use. In the package.json, we have already created a script to run this, which is start. So how do we do that? We simply go ahead onto the terminal. And once I do a quick ls, I should be able to see all of my files here. I'm gonna simply say npm start means I'm invoking this start script, which is mentioned inside the uh, uh, package.json. So when I invoke this start script, it runs the command node index.js. By the way, I could have run this node index.js directly as well, but this is actually a correct way of running the application. Okay, finally, an application. So let's go ahead on to up here and we're gonna simply say localhost and we are serving on port 8000. So when I hit that, it says visiting root. There we go, voila, pretty awesome, pretty amazing. So, so far we have gone pretty great application which is up and running and we are super happy about it. In case you want to change something here, you can surely do visiting root and we're gonna hit a couple of things. There we go. Whenever we are going to make any change, as of now we have to like close the server and restart the server so that changes can take place. There are better ways as well, but we are not worried much about it. So there we go. Our application is working absolutely fine. Now comes up the magic stuff. We are going to now move on to the part where we actually work on to the Docker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back here. We're gonna create a new file, which is gonna be simply Docker file. And right now it has nothing. So what we're gonna do with this Docker file, what we're gonna put up and how we are gonna learn more about the Docker through this very simple application. So that's gonna come up in the next video. I'm gonna keep a couple of seconds onto each file so that you can pause the video in case you are you were not able to follow along. Take a screenshot or something and can just write exactly what is written here. And also I'm gonna uh, allow you to have a quick peek into the package.json file as well. You can screenshot this or can pause this. And that's it, that's all our project is. And uh, I hope you are pretty excited about it because I'm very excited about this. Now we're gonna deploy a project onto the Docker. So let's catch up in the next video and learn more about the Docker.